in a similar fashion, you know, layering powder and then affixing it to itself somehow, uh, building it up in layers that way, you also have uh, this laser sintering. So this is when you see people 3D printing in metal, a lot of the times this is the technology they're talking about. Instead of a binder, you put down the powder that's either a titanium or stainless steel, a couple different styles, and then laser welding wherever you want the, the particles to stick together to build that model. So layer by layer by layer, this is used a lot in uh, aerospace. You can see, um, you can get really complex and very detailed uh, models that are going to be very durable. So you see they're test firing a turbine engine that was 3D printed. So instead of doing very complex milling uh, to subtract away to make uh, a metal object, you can build it up in this fashion much faster and uh, much easier, frankly. Another style, and that you'll see one of those in the uh, mechanical engineering building. They have 3D printed uh, fingers for, for children and things. Um, another popular one that's getting a little bit more popular. Um, it's not giant machines like those last uh, two machines I was showing you. These are much more tabletop size, and they're using resin. So resin is this nice mix, well, terrible mix of chemicals, not necessarily good for you. Always wear gloves that go from liquid to solid when exposed to certain wavelengths of light. So you'll see you, know, you have the build plates, and it's right up against a uh, right up against the exposure uh, plate. So the big vat, it's in the very bottom. And so from underneath, it's exposed to light. Uh, so wherever the light goes, that area will solidify, and then it lifts up. More material is shoved underneath between them, and that's solidified with another uh, beam of light. So the light can come from a projector, like what we have here, or it can come from a laser beam. So of course, the laser uh, style is going to be a lot more uh, accurate. Um, now, this material uh, is very expensive, uh, and it does expire over time. So uh, you want to use as little of this material as possible. So a lot of the larger objects you'll see printed with this, uh, this style printer are going to be hollow. So you can drain out all the excess stuff once it's printed and then save it. Um, right. So as you can see, things are moving very, very slowly. You can get very high detail, but the high detail means many, many, many layers uh, in, that are measured in microns many of the, much of the time. So this is going to be one of your more accurate uh, available uh, 3D printing. Uh, technologies, but it's going to take a long time. So you see this lasered model here is probably going to take about 18 hours in order to print. Once it's once they're done printing, you take that out and detach it from the printer base or the print plate, and then you rinse off the excess uh, resin that's stuck to it in an alcohol bath, and then you would uh, finish exposing it in a UV cabinet or in the sun. It's cured, but it's not fully cured, so you want to make sure that that's fully cured. Of course, this is used in a couple different industries. You'll see this in architecture. You'll see this in jewelry stores. Um, Depending on the type of resin you're using, it can be formulated to do different things. So they're coming out now with flexible resins, um, but most of what you'll see out there are either just very simple uh, mold models for mold making or uh, for casting. So some sort of resin that will burn away really easily and cleanly. The most popular style of 3D printer is going to be your filament style. So this is where you're extruding some sort of material to build it up in layers by, and layers and layers. So when you see people are 3D printing houses um, or uh, you know, concrete models or some sort of goo of some sort, uh, usually this is what they're talking about. This is not quite as expensive as some of that resin printing that I was showing you, and you can scale it up pretty high. Uh, MIT figured out a way to do it with glass, uh, which is very exciting. And then, uh, but most of what you're going to see is plastic. So you take the raw plastic in an industrial setting and you add maybe colors to it or wood fiber or carbon fiber to it and they extrude it in a controlled environment at, a, at an exact diameter and with uh, a lot of accuracy. So, and very clean. And then they put that on a roll and then we buy that and put it in our printers that bring it in, remelt it on top of itself. So say you were going to print a Lego, you could use the same type of plastic. Uh, plastics have different formulations. Um, so you use like ABS or something, which is a styrene plastic that we generally use. Uh, that would be the same plastic, same type of plastic as a Lego. But um, when they make the Lego, they take the plastic directly, melt it once, and shoot it into a mold. And then it's a, the Lego's done. Um, whereas when we would make the Lego, they would already have put it, melted the plastic once into a filament, and we would be melting it again and layering it on top of itself. Okay. Yes. Okay. Excellent. So, not only would you have melted the plastic twice, which means uh, precious materials have been lost and it changes the properties of the plastic, but also every layer is going to be kind of a weak spot in your model. So it's not going to be ever as strong as your Lego, but it's great for uh, making something that looks like Lego and performs kind of like a Lego, which is what prototyping is all about. And that's why it's gotten so popular. This technology has really been around since the 70s and 80s, but when the patents expired in the year 2000s, then 
and Kickstarter came along, then suddenly people were experimenting, making their own tabletop versions um, of this technology. And that's kind of allowed this, uh, this idea to really blossom quite a bit. So here we have uh, the most popular styles of 3D printers that print plastic. Uh, you have the Delta model that has three uh, different axes, and it's based on uh, basically one of the type of print and place machine. And then you have your uh, Cartesian style printers. It's only going to move along the X and the Y and the Z directions. So at the library makerspace, we only use filament, and uh, that's the only style of printer we have so far. Uh, because of the explosion of 3D printing uh, across the world, really, then the, print, the plastic has become relatively cheap and expensive, and this kind of hot glue gun style has been uh, probably the least toxic and the most accessible uh, tabletop style uh, technology that you can use. Uh, so this is great for uh, you know, homemade fabrication um, that's a little less hazardous uh, than, say, the, big, the giant machines full of powder or the, um, or the resins that you always have to wear gloves and worry about uh, emissions or something.